What's going on guys, this is the Econ Boss and in today's video we're going to take a look back in time to 2017 when dropshipping was just, it was just laughable how easy it was. A lot of my friends, they just run a stupid dog product on a dog page and they made so much money overnight. I'm sure some of you guys can relate or at least seen this happen, maybe seen it blow up on YouTube. But a lot of you guys are probably new dropshippers as well. Anyways, welcome to the channel. If you're new, you should look at this because this is going to be back in time, way back in time when dropshipping was just super easy. Easy. Well, of course, making a lot of money has never been easy, but I'll tell you guys, it, it was just laughable how easy it was to make money in 2017. So this is just going to be a more entertainment video instead of just education. I hope you guys are fine with that. Next video is going to be a super cool dropshipping strategy like always. But please, guys, give me a chance here to try to entertain you guys as well. So please just drop a like on this video. Make sure you do go down and subscribe and comment. Let's just get into the video. <laughs> So dropshipping in 2017, it was different. It was different. And it was so funny as well because you could just promote a certain product on an influencer page and it just blew up overnight. And it was always fun. Like it was it was always a risk, you know, but it was so simple that you could actually take a watch and put it on a watch page and it would sell. It's just laughable. I had a friend who sold a phone case. He sold $10,000 in like three days just from using one specific page. I didn't remember if it was a meme page or what it was, but keep in mind, he didn't spend money on Facebook ads and he got his shout outs for like $40, $20 because shout outs, everyone was trying to undercut each other, you know, the influencers. So it was super cheap to get a shout out back in the days. Well, I actually talked to an influencer yesterday and she said she charged $1,000 just for a post on the story for one post. Obviously, this is an actual person, not just a page, but still it's a lot of money, right? But that was the thing back in the days. These pages would be promoting you. They would give you packages. They still give you packages and everything, but good pages would promote you for $10 or $20, just give you trial and everything and you can set up a cheap package for more posts but that's what some of my friends did so i had a friend who took a phone case and put it on a related page and he made 10k in three days like i already said well first of all it was pretty profitable because he didn't spend money on ads and his influencer shout out was super, super cheap. He probably spent like $30 to make that amount of money, 10K or something. Obviously, we'll have to ship out orders and everything, but I'm sure it was pretty cheap. Uh, he probably sold it for like 15 and bought it for $1 or something, but that's insane. And you know, he made 10K and then he bought another shout out. He maybe bought a package for $50 of three shout outs uh, every other day type of shout out. I don't know what he really did, but that just goes to show he used to do this back in the day. You guys probably heard this story. You could take the lion bracelet and put the lion bracelet on a lion page and it would instantly sell. You could take a dog phone case and put the dog phone case on the dog page and it would instantly sell. It's just so fun. The only thing is like now, first of all, it's way more expensive because the market start to understand that it's money to be made here. And second of all, it was not saturated back in the days. Nobody was really doing this. So the market was really untapped. And also people didn't know what to charge. It was quite new for them to use influencer marketing. And I know it's only three years ago, but the game was totally different. So you could get so much money out of it. I mean, you could still, you could buy for $1 and sell for $10 and still make profit. People used to take their Instagram shout outs, you know, their sales and put them into Facebook. So they would actually use Instagram to test the product and gather data from Instagram, maybe put the email list on Facebook, start running Facebook ads, look like audiences. People used to do that strategy all the time and it works so well. So that was, it was just awesome back in the days. It was totally different. It was like Fortnite season one. Also the other thing, you know, these posts blew up. They went viral because like I said, the market was untapped. They hadn't seen this product before, which was so cool. So whenever you were to find a portable blender, for example, that people hadn't seen, it would blow up. And the other thing is you wouldn't have to be so good at choosing products. Please guys, drop a like on this video and subscribe. You wouldn't have to be that good at choosing products because every product could sell because you find the ideal audience, which is hard on Facebook. You could just take a stupid phone case. Like the lion bracelet would not work today. It just wouldn't work if you were to test it on Facebook and similar things like that. But in those days, you just took the lion bracelet bracelet on an animal page on like a wildlife page or or a or a lion page and it would just instantly sell a lot it was just so funny and you got all these good pages promoting you and there was never really cross promotion either because not a lot of people did it however though later on this some of these influencers actually saw that it's a potential in this market and they even started drop shipping themselves so people would build their own instagram pages over years just to gather a lot of followers just to promote their product once because they saw a potential it's just really cool and then you will get a free shout out to 
too, guys. So influencer marketing today, it's not really too good. If I were to do influencer marketing, I would only do personal brand. I would actually only use real people. Like for example, Kylie Jenner, just for, to give out an example. I would only use real people to to get them to use your t-shirt, use your product, whatever your product is. That's how I would do it. And you won't have to deal too much with the Facebook rules. You won't get banned because you're promoting something that's a little bit on the edge. That's what I would do, guys. If, if I were to do influencers, I would I'll do a personal figure type of page where it's actually that person, not, you know, just a random page. It doesn't really work too well anymore. However, though, I wouldn't do influencers to this day. I would just learn the skill of Facebook ads because on Facebook, if you know what you're doing, you can basically print money. <laughs> And if you guys want to get into my coaching program in e-commerce and dropshipping, you can message me on Instagram here. This face mask too, they used to go insanely viral back in the days. So you could try any face mask because that was kind of neat. I know face masks been on the market for ages, but I'm just saying it used to work like that. It just used to be laughable how easy it was to make money with dropshipping. I wish you guys could see it back in time. Maybe you can find some videos. I know Tanner Planist used to do this thing a lot. There's a lot of success stories of just running something on the influencer page. Then you go, then you go play golf and you know, two hours later, you check your phone and you made $800 or something. That's a lot of stories like that with the influencer pages. However, it's harder today, but I also think it's more rewarding. It's easier to build a brand, but it's just a little bit harder because you got to run the Facebook ads. You got to do everything perfectly fine. And like I said, guys, margins used to be way lower too because the influencer shout outs were so cheap. So you could, like I said earlier, you could just buy your product for $1 and sell for 10. And if the shout out costed $30, you would just have to sell three of them and it already made your money back. So now, you know, when you run Facebook ads, you probably try to force like a $25 margin. You buy it for 10 and you sell for 35. Well, on Instagram, you got to shout out so cheap that you wouldn't have to do it. But guys, I have to make this clear in this video. Do not run influencers anymore unless you're running a personal brand. It doesn't really work too well. I gotta be honest. It really does. But I just, rem but I just remember a lot of my friends, you know, they used to go on Instagram, get their first sales and then bring it over to Facebook and it would just take off. The other thing is Facebook ads as well. You know, we dropship. It was quite untapped back in the days. So not a lot of people would be dropshipping on Facebook. Facebook, the market was just way easier. Actually, back in the days, you used to use super small interest on Facebook because now, you know, if you look at my Facebook ad strategies, I'll tell you guys to use interest with a size of, for example, 8 million, 10 million, 100 million, and even a billion. But back in the days, people's strategy used to just be like super specific using super small interest because every interest was kind of untapped. But Facebook wasn't abroad. It didn't optimize as well. Facebook is better now, but you could actually use the bad Facebook to your advantage back in the days. So what people would do, they would just target super, super specific specific interests. So for example, if they were to sell a car product, they would target a specific brand for that car and it would work because that interest never seen it before. People didn't really go broad back in the days. You know, nobody would sell a home product and just target home. Nobody would target big interests like Netflix or YouTube, those big, big interests. It was not a big thing back in the days. People also used to narrow their ad sets down towards, you know, ages, countries, stuff like that. But in these days, you know, Facebook is so broad. You don't, you barely touch your ad set. That's the funny part. You just, you know, increase the budget. CBO was never a thing back in the days, but back in the days, you know, we used to work a lot with lookalikes. Some people did retargeting, but then it was just scaling with a, like a normal budget of $10, $25, $50. But I never really saw people scaling with like big numbers because the profit margin was just way higher. Conversion rate was higher. Every store was basically made with the Brooklyn theme too, which is quite funny. And people used to make their pictures on Canva. Like they would just say like, take care of your dog in a picture, post it. And it was as simple as that. Like people would make these bad pictures pictures and post them. Nobody really ran video ads either, which is the funniest part of it all. They just run the stupidest picture and it always works. So this video goes to show dropshipping was way easier back in the days. However, it was not easier to create like six, seven figures because you only created so much, but then it was over. But in these days, you know, you, there's no limit to how much you can make. It's a little bit harder, but it's just way more rewarding. So I hope you guys found this video, maybe not helpful, but entertaining. If you did like this video, hope you go down and smash a like on it. Make sure you do subscribe to the Ecom Boss channel because we do drop a lot of good content here and you'll see me in the next video.